Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Computers Client Build 16. The name of this build is Typewriter. This system is going into the Case Labs Mercury S3. So it's an MITx build, and as you can see from the components, it's going to be a high-end water-cooled system. I've been looking forward to this build because of all of the interesting ideas the client has for the case mods, custom paint, custom cables, the theme and the color scheme. It's going to be a unique little build. And it's going to be fairly different from the systems I've been building recently. You can see there's a lot of Aqua Computer components here. But certainly the thing I'm most looking forward to is the extensive case mods. I'm now going to get started with a brief overview of the components. Now, not all of the components have been confirmed yet. I'm going to change a number of them as I'm building the system. You can see the motherboard I have here is the Asus Maximus 6 Impact. We're actually going to be using the Maximus 7 Impact. I have 16 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator Platinum, two OCZ vectors, an NVIDIA Titan. I have two Western Digital Velocity Raptors, but these aren't actually the hard drives we're going to be using. I have a slim optical drive, which will be part of the case mods and a Silverstone Strider 650 watt gold. For the water cooling components, I have a couple of aqua computer radiators here, a 140 millimeter and 240 millimeter radiator. I have some aqua computer DP ultra coolant, which looks like good coolant. I haven't used it before, but it has antimicrobials and anti-corrosives. Now this is the tubing the client wanted to use originally. It's Tigon tubing, the main problem with it is the very small internal diameter of 8 millimeters. As a lot of you will know, I prefer not to use soft tubing, but I'll talk more about this coming up. I have a whole bunch of bits power fittings and a couple of aqua computer hard drive water blocks. I know a lot of you will be wondering why I'm using hard drive water blocks, but you'll see exactly why I'm using them coming up. I have an aqua computer Creos CPU water block. A whole bunch of different Aqua Computer components here. I have a DDC pump with Aqua Computer top. There's actually an Aquero 5 light going into this build. I have a filter, temperature sensor, and flow meter, and also a reservoir. The fans I'm using in this build are all Noctua fans. There will be three radiator fans, two 120 millimeters, and a 140 millimeter fan. And for once, the colors might actually suit this build. As you can see from the MDPC sleeving here, this build is going to have an interesting color scheme. I have some violet and acid green sleeving, and also some interesting wiring here, silver wire with clear insulation. And you'll see what I'm planning on doing with all of this coming up. So that's an overview of the components. We'll take a more detailed look at some of the components as I'm installing them. Now for a brief look at the Case Labs Mercury S3. Ever since I first saw this case, I've been really looking forward to building into it because when Case Labs first appeared on the market, they brought something really new and different. The quality, the modular design with all of the different options was something that we hadn't seen before. And to have all of that in a small form factor case, I mean, small form factor cases are limited when it comes to quality and water cooling component capacity, particularly radiator capacity. So what this means, a case like this, where you can fit a couple of 280 millimeter radiators and then with the pedestal go even further, and all of the other options for this case is that you can build a high-end water-cooled ITX system without having to go to the extent of extreme modding as we've had to do previously. Now I work with my clients in a lot of different ways and I love working with them directly because it's completely different every time. And I don't set any rules. Sometimes the build is completely up to me, sometimes partly up to me. Sometimes, like this build, it's all up to the client. And this is the original sketch the client sent me to give me a rough idea of the mods and the layout of the components. And this may not seem like much, but this is really everything I need to go off, minus a few little details. And this is what I'm going to be going off for the mods for this build. Now, for me, there's three main steps when modding. Step one is creativity and imagination. It's when you come up with a theme, color scheme, ideas, and 
Also, as part of that step, you may move on to a layout for the components, the components you're actually going to use, but it's all about the aesthetics, what it's going to look like, creativity. The next step after that is implementing those ideas and figuring out if they actually work. And a lot of the time, you need to go back from step two to step one because the creative ideas you've come up with may not, you know, there may be no way of implementing them. It's just not possible sometimes. And so the client has actually done step one for me, the creative part. So it's taken a bit of the thinking out, made it a bit easier for me. And now I just need to figure out if the ideas the client has will work. Can they be implemented? And what I mean by this is you can't just go mounting components wherever you want to. The client didn't have any of the measurements when he did the sketch. So we don't know at this point if the components are going to fit where they're planned to be installed. And for example, the two hard drives and hard drive water blocks on the top panel, if they were even one millimeter wider, they would not have fit in that location. And that would be a major problem for this build because it's going to be a big feature. I mean, I'm sure I could have come up with something, a different way of mounting the top panel, a larger top panel, but these are all things you need to think about in these early stages. And if you're doing extensive bonds, everything needs to be taken into consideration and planned up front. If you're just doing a few minor mods, you can get away with just planning as you go and doing some of it later. But with extensive mods, you need to be thinking about tubing routing, component order, cables. For example, where I'm mounting the Aquero, if, if I miss one cable and I don't drill the hole for that cable and I want to put that cable in later, it means I need to go destroying the custom paint and drilling another hole later. I can't do that. Also, the tubing routing is the most difficult part because, for example, the reservoir, the filter and the pump are going to be millimeters apart. And when components are that close together, often there is no fittings that will actually get you between those components. You can see I've put two 90 degree fittings on the top panel. The reason I did that was to see if I could actually fit those fittings there because there's no other fittings I can use to get me from the hard drive water block back down into the case. And if it ends up too tight, it means I've got no fittings to actually, you know, nothing will fit there. So it means I can't even build the loop. So this all needs to be considered up front. It's a lot of planning, measuring. It takes a lot of time and you can't miss anything and make any mistakes because once you start cutting up the case, there's no going back. So for me, the step one, the imagination and creativity is probably the easiest part and it's certainly the funnest part. But then implementing all of those crazy ideas is definitely the hardest part. The step after that, again, is easy because you've planned everything out, you know exactly what you're going to do, and then it's just a matter of cutting up the case, painting, and all of that. So three main steps for me, and at this point, I've almost planned everything out, but you can't just do an initial test fit and that's it. You know, I'll need to come back many times as I install each component and do the mods for mounting each component. I'll need to come back and continue to test fit to find the position for the next component. So I'll probably end up test fitting this case 10, 15 times maybe. So it's a lot of installing the components and uninstalling the components, really building and then dismantling the system over and over again. So it's a lot of fun. But now that I have the initial layout, I'm able to start some of the mods. So as I mentioned, when modding, there's often a lot of test fitting to be done. And this is very time consuming. So what you really need to do is figure out the most productive way you can possibly do your mods. So an order in which to do them. 
and I'm starting with the top panel mods because to do these mods I don't need to remove any of the internal components or dismantle the case and I obviously need to have the case put together to do these mods and I need the internal components installed so I might as well start with these mods before I start completely stripping down the case to do the other more complex internal mods now I ordered the solid drop-in panel for this case because I thought I was going to be able to use it for the mods but it turns out the hard drives and hard drive water blocks were sitting up on an angle because they couldn't quite fit because there's raised sections on either side of the solid drop-in panel so you can see I've built a custom top panel and I've built it from 1.5 millimeter aluminium at this point it's almost complete I've drilled all of the mounting holes I have the hole at the back for the 140 millimeter fan and radiator and I'm currently doing a test fit but there is still a few more holes I need to cut and drill obviously there's hard drives going up here so I need to have holes cut for the cables SATA data and power I also need holes for the tubing and the tubing routing is going to be it's going to come up from the 140 millimeter radiator to the first hard drive water block then to the second one and then back down into the main compartment of the case from the second hard drive block before I do that I'm currently working on sorting out a small problem that I've run into you can see that I've installed a 90 degree fitting on one of the hard drive water blocks to test fit it and you can see that it's sitting up a lot higher than the surrounding components and it turns out it does not fit underneath the top panel cover and it doesn't fit by about five millimeters so I need to make up five millimeters somehow for this fitting and it's actually not just going to be one fitting it's going to be four 90 degree fittings in a row up here I could use a smaller fitting but I need a rotary fitting and I have no choice but to use bits power fittings in this build and you'll see why later on I'll talk more about that so there's an obvious answer here and I'm sure a lot of you have already figured it out the acrylic inlet outlet sections for the hard drive blocks I can just cut them down in size I've completed the top panel and I'm now modifying the top panel cover so you can see that I've cut the window section in the top panel cover and I'm now cutting the ventilation for the 140 millimeter fan so this is going to go about halfway down either side of the top panel cover and all the way across the back and it's a 25 millimeter gap so it's going to give plenty of ventilation to the 140 millimeter radiator and that will have mesh over it later while I'm at it I decided to cut all of the windows top panel window and both of the side panel windows you can see that modding can absolutely be done with simple tools even advanced modding I prefer to do a lot of it by hand because I just enjoy it more but as I mentioned recently I'm in the process of expanding moving into a large workshop with far more advanced tools so you're about to see some big changes on my channel I have a lot coming up and if you missed the last video that I did it was really a subscriber update video but it was actually Singularity Computers client build 15 build log part 2 I'll put a link on the screen make sure you check that out I talk a fair bit about what's coming up so I've now completed both of the side panels the top panel cover and all of the acrylic windows I've now cut down the acrylic inlet outlet sections on the hard drive water box so I've solved the problem of the top panel cover not fitting over the 90 degree fittings but I'm not really happy with this I decided to leave the high sections on either side I could have cut down the acrylic to size all the way across I did this to improve strength and also to improve the aesthetics just to create some more shape but you know you can see without that it would have just been one little thin piece of acrylic and the biggest problem with that is that there just wouldn't be enough strength and you can see that even now there's not enough strength because the acrylic is bowing up in the middle due to the o-rings so it's not putting enough pressure on the o-rings it could leak it's definitely not a risk I'm going to take and I don't like the look of the acrylic anyway it doesn't suit this build it doesn't suit the theme and one of the requests for this build was to use 
some brass. So I'm actually going to build these components from brass and I'll also be using some brass elsewhere. So I'm going to build these inlet outlet sections from brass and do it custom all the way. Now because I've cut these down so much it's meant that I also need to cut down the thread size of the fitting but it turns out this is not a problem there's still plenty of thread left. I'm now moving on to the dividing panel inside the case so to get to this panel I've had to remove all of the components from the case and completely dismantle the case so I've now moved on to the more complex internal mods so far I've cut a hole for cable routing a hole for the reservoir and I had to cut out the entire front section of this panel I'll be replacing it with a custom panel because the existing holes in the panel were in the wrong places so something else that I'm doing in this build as I've mentioned is installing a slim optical drive and I've mentioned many times previously I don't like optical drives they're outdated and unnecessary now there's almost nobody who still uses them I certainly don't but slim optical drives can sometimes be a nice addition when modding you know just another little feature so this was by client request obviously and what I'm doing here is just cutting a slot in the front panel for the slim optical drive and it's going to be a bit of a complex installation because of the the double panels that this case has you know all of the cover panels because there's really two front panels there's the cover panel and then the internal structural panel so you'll see how I'm going to go about that later on I'm now doing another test fit and this test fit is mainly for the dividing panel to figure out where I need to cut the holes for the tubing and also at this point I've installed the reservoir but I need to mount it somehow and there's some nice M4 threads in the bottom of this res so I'm going to drill holes through the bottom panel and mount the res using those M4 threads the existing threads in the bottom of the res and then I'm going to use some spaces to sit the res up just a little bit higher but I'm figuring out the positions now of the other components because you position the first component and then you can figure out where the rest are going to go you know to properly space everything out so that it looks right but also so that you can get fittings in between them so as I mentioned that initial test fit is you know just not enough it's not going to cut it you need to come back many times now I need to mount the pump to the bottom of the case and I can't do this with the pump the way it is the only way I'd really be able to do it is to get longer bolts and put them right up through the bottom panel and up through the pump casing which means the pump needs to be completely dismantled to remove it from the case which means you're going to get coolant everywhere so that would be a nightmare so I'm going to use a bits power component and I just love this component bits power makes some amazing water cooling components I've you know always like bits power components but just constantly bringing new excellent additions to the market it's a heat sink for the DDC pump it acts as a heat sink a cover and it has extra threads in the bottom of it so that you can actually use it to mount the pump to something so that's the main reason I'm using this component in this build I'm now working on the mods to the dividing panel and this is the panel that's going to fit in the section that I cut out. This is a very important part of the case. In this section I'm going to be mounting, well the reservoir is going to be in front of it and then next to the res is going to be the filter which is a great looking component, it's going to be an important feature and then there's going to be the Aquarius 5 light. So I'm now doing a test fit of that panel and you can see the layout exactly what I just mentioned and you can see another new component in here which is the piece of brass so I mentioned there was going to be more brass used in this build so they'll probably just be the two sections up the top on the hard drive water blocks and this section keep in mind this piece of brass has not yet been polished this has come straight off 120 grit sandpaper 
when it's polished it'll come up like a mirror like the bits power fittings with the nickel plating and you know brass is amazing looking material it looks like gold so it's going to work really nicely in this build I wish I'd filmed more of the process of building that piece of brass by hand because it was very difficult I mean if the holes were half a mil out or even less than that for the filter it wouldn't have worked the hole for the filter itself had to be within less than half a millimeter it had to be very accurately done and I did it all by hand with files you just don't realize when you do something by hand and you do it properly how much time goes into it so now you can start to see why I had no other choice but bits power fittings for this build and I'm not just saying that because I like bits power it's just that there's not yet any other company who has as many fittings as bits power does the range and in these tight spots you need all kinds of different fittings so you can see what I was talking about when I was you know saying how close these components are going to be together and how difficult that's going to make things that's it for part one of the build lock so where I'm up to here I've just about completed the mods there's only really a few small things I still need to do the mounting system for the optical drive for example and just some finishing touches here and there a few more cable routing holes and things and then the case will be ready for custom paint now I know I haven't talked much at all about the theme yet the name of the build typewriter gives a bit of a hint but I'm going to start the next part of the build log by talking about the theme in detail and all of the ideas for this build the color scheme I just wanted to keep it as a bit of a surprise and cover it as I go but that sums up this video thanks for watching please subscribe like and favorite if you want to see more